So it would seem that a lot of you are sick and tired of me using a seven-year-old audio interface for all of my microphone reviews. What I had been using is the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen, which came out in 2016, I believe. Well, I am finally upgrading to the Focusrite 18i 20 fourth gen, which is what you're listening to right now. The interface costs about $650. I did buy it with my own money, and this is not a full review. This is just a comparison with a number of very common microphones, as well as comparisons to another interface and a couple of outboard preamps. And this is really meant to function as a jumping off point for all of my reviews going forward because we are changing an integral part of the signal chain. And I wanted to provide you this point of reference. But we will discuss a few things before we dive into the tests. So let's do that. And first, let's talk about what comes in the box. What a shocker, you get the audio interface, a power cable, a USB-C to USB-C cable, and a USB-C to USB-A adapter, a set of rack ears, and a bunch of software that you can download off of Focusrite's site if you register for some stuff. And now let's talk about the physical differences between the second gen and the fourth gen. On the front, both devices have two XLR combo jacks. The second gen has a phantom power button for channels one through four or channels five through eight, while the fourth gen has phantom power for each individual channel. The second gen has a pad on channels one and two. The fourth gen does not have any pads. The second gen has individual gain dials for each channel. The fourth gen just has a general encoder dial that's going to work for each input. You also get a linking, instrument, auto gain, safe mode, and air button for each individual channel. The second gen has no output meter and only has a granularity of five LEDs. While the fourth gen has a much more granular meter and it also includes that output meter, the fourth gen has an alt monitor output and you can select that with this alt monitor button. The fourth gen also has a built-in talkback microphone button and the mic is in between the XLR combo jacks on the front. On the rear, they are very similar. The fourth gen has USB-C while the second has USB printer cable. You get two optical inputs and two optical outputs on the fourth gen versus one of each on the second gen. Both of them have 10 quarter inch line outputs. The second gen has six combo jacks, so you would need to use the two on the front if you want all eight inputs, while the fourth gen has eight combo jacks on the back as well as the two on front. And if you use the front two jacks for channel one and two, that will take control over the rear inputs. Now there are of course differences in the specs between the two interfaces and I will have a list of some of them in an Excel spreadsheet up on screen, long live Excel. But what's most important is the sound of these interfaces. So let's just dive into the tests and you can hear it. If you want higher quality audio, go to podcastage.com. I have that there. Let's get into it. Now we're gonna do some blind comparisons with a couple of common microphones running through both the 18i 22nd and 4th gen. We're starting with the AT2020. What you're hearing right now is interface A. This is interface A. Jumping over to interface B. This is interface B. Just so you know, I level match them as close as I can. The gain on the second gen is set at around 11 o'clock. Gain on the fourth gen is set at 26 decibels. This is microphone AT2020 on interface A. And now we are back on interface B, interface B. Which one did you like? And up on screen, here is me disclosing which interface was which interface. Let's move on. Next up, we are on the NT1 5th gen running over XLR into the 18i 22nd and 4th gen. 2nd gen gain is set at 11 o'clock. Gain on the 4th gen is still set at 26 decibels. Make sure to check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these in post. What you're hearing now is interface A. 
This is interface A. Jumping over to interface B, here is interface B. Do you hear any difference? Here's another sample of the NT1 5th gen running through interface A. This is interface A again. And now jumping over to interface B, this is interface B. Do you hear any significant difference? Let me know. And up on screen, here are the, here's, that's what they are. Let's do two more. Now I am on the classic SM7B just a couple inches off in neutral mode. Again, it's running through the second and fourth gen. Gain on the second gen is set at 100%. Gain on the fourth gen is set at 59 decibels. And I level match them as close as I can. I will have the raw meters up on screen. What you're hearing right now is interface A. This is interface A. Now jumping over to interface B, this is interface B, do you hear a difference? Again, this is interface A, this is interface A with the Shure SM7B, a very quiet microphone. And now jumping over to interface B, this is interface B with the SM7B. And look on screen, here are the solutions to which interface was which interface. Did you like it? Now I have the U87AI running into the 18i 22nd and 4th gen. The gain on the 2nd gen is set at around 11 o'clock. Gain on the 4th gen is set at 26 decibels. I have level matched them as close as I possibly can. I will be switching back and forth between them so you can hear. Is there any difference in the sound quality or does it sound pretty much identical? Again, here is the 87 on interface A. This is interface A. Now the U87AI on interface B. This is interface B. And up on screen are the answers of which interface was which interface. Now I want to hear if there's any significant difference in the noise performance between the 2nd gen and the 4th gen. So right now I have the 7B running into both of them. Gain on the 2nd gen is 100%. Gain on the 4th the gen is 59 decibels. I'm going to replace the microphone with a resistor. Let's hear the noise floor. Next, let's do another blind comparison, this time using the U87, and what we're comparing is the Focusrite 18i 24th Gen and a much higher-end interface, the Universal Audio X8. The gain on both devices is digitally controlled. The gain is set at 26 decibels for both of them. I have the meters up so you can see how close we are actually getting on both devices. And to me, it looks as close to perfect and close to identical as it could be. I have been switching back and forth between them this entire time, but here's another sample on interface A. Jumping over to interface B, here is how interface B sounds. Here is another sample on interface A with the U87. And here is yet another sample of interface B with the U87. Again, the gain on both devices is 26 dB, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz, and up on screen are the results of which interface was which interface. Are you surprised and shocked and bewildered? Or is it exactly as you thought it would be? Is all right in the world? Let's move on. Now, just because we can, let's do some more blind comparisons, this time between the internal preamps on the 18i20 and a couple of outboard preamps running line level into the 18i20 4th gen. The microphone is the... Neumann, hello Neumann, U87 AI. The interface's gain is set at 26 decibels and the outboard preamp is the Universal Audio LA610 Mark II. Compression is bypassed, EQ is bypassed, gain is set at plus 10, so as much tube color as we can get, and the level is set at 1.5. That is enough switching back and forth between them. Did you hear a significant difference? Did you like one more than the other? Up on screen are the results of which was which. 
Did you guess right? Let's do one more. And the second outboard preamp is the WA73 EQ from Warm Audio. The EQ is bypassed, gain is set at 35 decibels, and the output gain trim is rolled back ever so slightly, and I think I level match them pretty darn close. Just like all these comparisons, it is a blind comparison, and I'm indicating whether you're hearing preamp A or preamp B. This is preamp A. This is preamp A with the U87. Jumping over to preamp B. This is preamp B with the U87. And up on screen are the results. Here they are. Warm Audio 73 and 18i20 4th Gen. Which did you like? The last thing that I want to address is why am I sticking with a Focusrite Scarlett series interface when I have a universal audio? The job of the demos in my review videos is to provide the largest number of people an accurate representation of the performance that they should be expecting out of their microphones. And the Scarlett series of interfaces is still to this day the best selling audio interface out there. So by using this as the baseline, I am providing the most number of people an accurate representation of what they can expect out of their mics. Also, I don't think the Focusrite Scarlett series sounds bad. I think it is a perfect middle of the road audio interface, pretty good entry level interface. It doesn't give microphones a massive benefit, but it also doesn't function as a massive detriment to the microphones. I just think it is a great middle of the road, average sounding, decent sounding audio interface. Also, I do understand completely that a lot of people who use Focusrite on Windows run into issues with stability and drivers and software, but I run Mac and have for 20 years at this point. And over the eight or nine years that I have used Focusrite, I can't recall a single time where I've had any kind of bugs with the software or any kind of stability issues. So for my studio, my operating system, my workflow, this still makes perfect sense, especially once we account for the goal of providing the largest number of people an accurate representation of the performance they should expect out of a microphone. I hope that was interesting. I hope that was helpful. And going forward, the 18i24 gen will be the center of my microphone reviews. And for the higher end mics, I will continue to use the Universal Audio X8 for the microphone comparison section. Thank you to the members for supporting the channel. Really does help me continue to make these videos, buy this gear, keep the studio running. Happy 2025. Happy New Year. I'll be back with more reviews very soon. I love you. Bye-bye.